Dmitro Kozubenko, an officer of the planning section of the Rubies Brigade of Ukraine, said that captured Russian soldiers say they go to war only to earn money. In a conversation with one of the captured occupiers, we asked him why they are going to this war. According to him, their main motivation is to make money. Although, apparently, this is not their main, but their only goal. They are promised a large sum of money for participating in the Russian-Ukrainian war. In principle, that's all. They are not motivated enough to reach our positions and die. They are sent to storm our positions, and if they refuse, they are threatened to be killed by their own men," said Kozubenko on Espresso TV. According to the officer, better trained Russian assault units receive significantly higher payments compared to standard units. There are also well-trained elite assault units of the occupiers. They have been trained for this purpose and do not know how to do anything else. Of course, they receive other payments. Therefore, the main goal of the occupiers to go to this war is to make money and the other is not to die at the hands of their own citizens," he added. The financial sweetener comes as President Vladimir Putin struggles to recruit soldiers for his army as Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine grinds on in its third year. Authorities in the city of Moscow are offering a record signing-on bonus for new recruits to fight in Ukraine in the latest sign of a scramble to boost Russian troop numbers. Moscow Mayor Sergei Sobyanin introduced the one-time signing bonus of 1.5 million rubles or about $22,000 for city residents who joined the military. Those willing to join the fight in Ukraine can also receive a one-time cash payment of about $5,690 to $11,390 for injuries depending on the severity and the family of a soldier killed in action could be paid $34,150. Russia also entices foreigners with lucrative salaries, citizenship, and comprehensive social welfare benefits. With each new decree, the Kremlin has gradually eased military enlistment requirements, such as needing residency to join the military and expanded its list of incentives to join. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said his troops had no immediate plans to leave Russia's border Kursk region that they entered on August 6. Ukraine will hold the territory as it is integral to his victory plan to end the war, Zelensky said. For now, we need it, he stressed. Our operation is aimed to restore our territorial integrity. We capture Russian troops to replace them with the Ukrainians. The same attitude is to the territories. We don't need their land, Zelensky said in an exclusive interview with US NBC News Channel this week. That's something we posited shortly after the operation was launched that might be a major goal, he explained. The operation in the Kursk region will last as long as it takes to win the war, the Ukrainian leader explained. Zelensky said one of the goals of the Kursk operation was to force Moscow to pull troops from across the 600-mile front line in Ukraine, in particular in the east. And while he said Russia has diverted 60,000 troops to Kursk from Ukraine, Pokrovsk has not seen a big drop. The Ukrainian leader stressed that Kiev does not seek to seize Russian territory, and the operation in Kursk does not mean an exchange of territory. Ukraine's victory plan is aimed at forcing Russia to end the war, he stressed. Zelensky noted that Putin doesn't care about the fate of Kursk or Donbass and his only goal is to continue the invasion of Ukraine. Furthermore, the Ukrainian leader revealed that the lack of long-range weapons forced Kiev to search for alternatives, which led to the start of the operation. Touching upon Ukraine's military stock, Zelensky revealed that the ratio of weapons has improved. Previously it was 1-12 in favor of Russia, after the Kursk operation it became 1-3. Zelensky revealed that the surprise incursion into Kursk region was sparked by Ukrainian intelligence reports that Russia was looking to set up a buffer zone near the Sumy and Chernihiv regions furthermore, Zelensky confirmed Pentagon reports on August 7 that he had not informed Washington about the imminent attack on Kursk region. We didn't inform anybody. And this is not the question of distrust, Zelensky stated. He explained that the reason why the operation in Kursk was successful is that he shrunk to the maximum the circle of people who knew about this operation. The Ukrainian leader reminded that Kiev's counteroffensive last summer failed in many ways because of how much it was advertised and talked about, which gave Russians a chance to prepare. 
The Ukrainian leader refused to answer the question whether his forces would capture more Russian territories, however, added that the Kursk operation was part of the plan. Ukraine's incursion into Kursk region was the largest-scale attack on Russian territory since World War II.